Well, good afternoon, crafty friends. It's Bella here from Rachel and Bella Crafts and we've come to do some more sewing, uh, some slow stitching on our in our series. Now, I brought this on now to show you uh, what I was doing because I had such a fumbling day yesterday. I've gone back to my old way of tying a single knot. I don't know whether you can see it, it's a bit high there. And you just cut it off and it comes off. So there's no problem in getting it off. Okay. So it shouldn't really come undone. And I've just been doing some invisible stitching, which is so invisible. I can't see where I finished. Here I finished. And I thought I would put the camera on and show you, except I've got a knot now. There is a knot, but it's not big enough. I hope you're all well. Thank you all for your lovely comments and welcome to any new subscribers. I've been out shopping today, believe it or not, because I don't go out very often, but I decided today I wanted to get um, my things ready for my holiday on Saturday. So I had to go out today and that's why I'm doing this now. It's late evening. What is it? Half past six. Yes. What? Yeah. Half past six. So. That reminds me, I got a funny feeling you can hear my clock. So I'm going to move it out of, because I thought I heard it on there um, yesterday. So I do apologize. Now, as I was saying, the invisible stitch, you come up, but you go back as near to the stitch as you can, and then you won't see it. And it's funny because I've got four layers here. So you really need a pointy, um, that one goes in all right, but you've got to find a place to come up because there's two lots of lace there, look, plus the batting on the back. So it's a little bit of a tug. But with this stitch, you cannot see the lines as you can with the burrow. Now, the burrow stitch, as I've learned from one lovely subby, is spelled B-O-R-O, -O, not the way I spelt it, burrow. And as I said to the lady, I think it was because it was an Australian lady speaking and it probably was the way she said it that I assumed it was burrow, but it's burrow. I'm not even sure I'm saying it correctly, but B-O-R-O -O, apparently. I haven't typed it in to see if the lady's correct, but I'm sure she is. So thank you for that, whoever you are. I didn't have a clue. Now, I've ironed this lovely material and it looks absolutely super duper. Now, can you see some circles on my desk? Well, I thought to myself, I absolutely love, isn't it easier with a knotted um, knot on the end there? It hasn't come undone actually, naughty knot. Perhaps I need two knots. Trying to catch me out, it was. This is quite um, quite a thick cotton, this one. Yeah, that should be okay. I'm really at the end now anyway. But I thought I'm not going through that again, trying to thread needles on camera. It's a nightmare, isn't it? Those of you that do any sewing on camera, you can guarantee something will go wrong. So yes, I went shopping and I bought, let me just finish this off. And then I show you. So I'll go through to the back. Already done that and all, all the way down there. And you can't see the stitching, but you can on the back look. Isn't it clever? So that's the lovely stitching on the back, but you don't see it on the front. I shall just knot that off. I think I will do that twice because I want it to stay on. And I've also done this. That's not staying done up, by the way. But it doesn't matter, because I've finished now. Where's my scissors? So that's with that one. I can go over there. And this is absolutely gorgeous that I had from Rose. And what I've done, because that's going on there, all right? But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some borrow stitching across. And I did wonder whether I would just do it where the page folds 
just do this bit here and then this bit here i was going to do some um, marking with the thread wasn't i but what i thought i would do rather than do that bit on camera i'm going to put that back on there a moment tiny little pin there i'm going to um do it on one of these circles so that's going to go on there put a stitching across there and then i'm going to do some filling in there with my threads there now these lovely little things i've been cutting out with my die cuts and i did tell you whilst those of you were with us on the retreat and i put it through my big shot okay so that's what i've used and that's the three sizes that's that one no that's that one and there and it even cut through the batting so I did them separately. I didn't do them together. I, I went, put them through my machine separately and it seems to cut beautifully. And I love these little marks here because that is where I'm going to be. I thought I would put that on there, on that one, if I can center it properly. Put a pin in there to keep it together. And I was gonna stitch around the edge here but I thought the mark making, especially on this one here, look, would be lovely going across here with stitches, don't you think? And then doing a couple of small stitches down here. So let me put a pin in that and we'll try it. It may not work. And I have a feeling that I may need to just use one thread. I'm thinking about it now, because I've, I've already loaded my, um, I was already but I've got a feeling that's going to be too much. Yeah, it's going to be because I think one would do. So I've got some up here. Let's have a look. One or two. I've got three strands here. I'll take one away, I think, if I can. It's never easy, is it? I'm keeping it down there on my hand. But don't they get muddled up? There, got it. And I think I'll use the same needle I was using just now because it was nice and easy to thread. Oh my gosh, look at that. It was just a bad day yesterday, wasn't it? You get days like that, don't you? With anything, it's not just with filming, it's... It happens in life, doesn't it? You have a fabulous day one day and then the next day everything goes to pot. But never mind. No, I'm not doing that one. I'm doing this one. No, I'm just thinking. Shall I start? I'm just thinking about making... Oh, those needles not... Needles too thick, I think. Well, the knot's okay. I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing. May have been better with just one thread thinking about it. Just make them different lengths. And if you wanted to, you could mix this with white. But it's just to give an impression of movement of the, because this is, that's the countryside. Should be green really, shouldn't it? But the, the beautiful material that Rose gave me is not green it's pink and if you come back and just do different lengths as i say you're just making marks i haven't done this before actually i just thought about this yesterday and i just wonder what it would look like you know so you're getting texture but we'll see. We'll see how it's coming. That was, wasn't straight. But it doesn't matter by the look of it. Let's do it up the right way and then I'll get a better idea of where I'm meant to put the needle. That would help, wouldn't it? Yes. And a thinner needle would help. I've got to try and get some nice needles because mine have all disappeared. I don't know where they've gone.
And really, I don't need to do them as close as I'm doing them. So I'm going to spread them out a little bit now. And um, I'm trying to think now, when you're painting, it should get more faint as it goes back. So should I have more thread going across? Try and make it a little bit longer and, and go down a bit. Do you understand what I mean? Those of you that do any painting, if you're doing a distance, you would use a lighter colour and you would fade it out because it always looks a little bit misty. So I'm just thinking now how we're going to paint a picture with this. And it's not complicated. It's just where you put your stitches. That one's not straight. I'm going to have to take that one out. It's because I'm doing it upside down. How are you all getting on with your slow stitching? Rachel was telling me that, um, and she said on her video yesterday, that uh, they'd like me to do another slow stitching uh, workshop in the retreat in November, which is lovely. So yes, I'm quite willing. Yeah, thinking about it now, I, I think it needs to be closer as it goes away. But this is just me trying this out because I've not done this before. I could have used a contrast, but I really wanted to see how this was going to work. So give it a go. And those of you that were on the retreat, you must have some of this material because a lot of you, um, we were, we were cutting it up and giving it away to those that wanted it. Rose very kindly donated it. And um, so I know some of you have this material, if not all of you. I'm pretty sure I went round the tables with it. Unless you've used it for a cover or something, which is different. So there we go. Look, it's getting... Oh, let me come up a bit closer a minute. So there you know. It's not a satin stitch because I want it to be messy. A satin stitch would be closer together, as you know. Those of you that do any kind of sewing would know. Now I'm going to um, I'll try and keep this straight now if I can. I'm going to go back in there now in the middle of that. There's probably an easier way of doing this, but I, I've not done it before and I haven't seen it done before, so... If you know an, a better way of doing it, then tell me and share it. That would be nice. Oh, I've got to say, uh, G. Kerr did a fabulous video dyeing uh, her lace, not her lace, different materials with grapes. Oh, I forgot to buy grapes. And, oh my gosh, it was stunning. The colours were amazing. She's so talented. So clever. And always willing to have a go. And I love people like that, don't you? Where they're willing to have a go at something. Nothing to be afraid of because if it doesn't turn out, you can always do something else with it, can't you? Just have a go. I know this would have been easier in a hoop. I know somebody said that to me. And I forgot. When I cut them out, I was so excited that I'd made circles. Actually, what I should have done was done it on the bigger sheet and I could have put a hoop. I've never actually used a hoop. But it's hand stitching. You like to feel the material. You like to feel where it's going, don't you? I think this is why I do it. So bear with me. Um, I can either stop. See, now it's coming on nicely. Yeah. And then we'll... I'm trying to think what kind of stitch would be good for the trees and the bushes. So I'm thinking while I'm doing this, where have I come out? I quite like this. This is really nice. It's very um, peaceful, restful. And Anne Brooke calls it so for the soul which is absolutely right because you're stitching and it makes you feel happy. It makes you feel as if you're doing something useful. 
It makes you feel as if you're creating something lovely, which you are. And I've got to be careful now because there's a tree there and I need to keep going down there. But it's furrows, so I've got to keep them fairly straight, haven't I? We were talking about that yesterday, weren't we? But yes, it certainly would have probably been better if I'd done it um, in a hoop. Right, I'm going to go there so I know where the edge is. Well, that's nice. I like that. Now, that's a wall there, I th believe. But it only goes to there. There's some... Oh, no, that's the, that's the viaduct. Yes, that's the top of the viaduct. And then, obviously, this comes down then. But I'm not quite sure what they've done there, because where would the... Um... Do you know, I've got a funny feeling that's water, not... Um... But it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter. It's pretty. That's the main thing. And we're making marks, which is what I said I would do yesterday. So instead of doing it with a pencil, I'm doing it with a thread. And the messier, the better. As Rachel would say from Roxy Creations. Sorry, I just wanted to concentrate on that little bit there and just put a little bit in here. So I'm going over to the other side, but I'm not going to have enough, so I'm going to cast off now. Finish off, I should say, not cast off. That's knitting and I don't even knit. So why I say that, I don't know. Hopeless at knitting, I've told you this before, haven't I? Okay, so let's just take a look then. Oh, that, take that out now, that's not going to move. So what I think I'm going to do now, but I think I'm going to do it in white. I'm just going to go around the edge there to keep all these together. And I've threaded, yeah. No, that's the other one, isn't it? I thought I'd done the white, sorry. I thought I'd done it. No, I haven't, because I thought I might go around. Or shall I do it in the pink? It's it's quite small, isn't it? So you don't want too many layers of... Because um, that's quite thick, but I wanted the texture. But that's just two threads, okay? So that's a bit of mark making there. Um, trying to decide now. I think white would be nice around there. So there's usually six strands on the floss. Is it floss? Is that what they call them? Probably got it wrong. Now, what I learned to do the other week, except you've got to do it before it... No, it's not going to work this time. I did it too late. And, of course, I'm only taking two out. Oh, oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> She's at it again, isn't she? There we go. There's two strands there, I believe, yes. I'll have to sort that out later. I don't care, I'm not bothered. It'll all be sorted. At least my needle didn't come unthreaded. Right, so let's see if we can keep that. I think I will put my pin back in so it doesn't move. There. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do a straight stitch. And I really think I should have used a thinner needle. But I can't find a thin needle. I don't know where they've all gone. That was the reason I wanted a bigger one, so I could put more, you know, do it that way. Of course, you've got to remember now we're going around in a circle. So, I hope you all made your hexagons yesterday and went over to watch the lady uh, that showed me how to do it. She was good, wasn't she? Very clear. Yes, I like that white. 
I like the white. I could have gone a bit nearer the end, but I don't want it to fray so. So they may be small, but you can really... And the other thing was, if you wanted to make these, because I was watching... Um... Oh, it's gone out of my head. Something creations. Um... Uh... Oh, I'll link up below. And she's doing the most fab... She's doing a swap at the moment. And um... if I if I remember to... It's not Christina, is it? It's um... I'm no good with names. As you get older, you can't remember names, but um, I'll link it below. You know, and she's she's doing uh, a swap. Somebody's organised it for slow stitching, and they're doing squares, and they're only four inch squares, and they're all going to send to six people, I think, or I think that's the gist of it, or how ma however many you want, and then they're going to make something out of those six pieces that you um you receive. So it's a, instead of a tag swap, it's going to be a little um, slow stitch swap. So if any of you fancy doing that, pop over to her um, channel and she'll tell you all about it. I'm going on holiday, so I'm not going to start any more slow stitch things. Because um, I've got to think about what I've got to take away with me. Oh, did I show you my box? No, I didn't, did I? I just bought this in... Um, Put that back in there. See how messy I get? That's why I wind them onto card. Um, where did I go? B and M. And this is all ready for my holes. So that will go under there. That will go there. But look, look at this. Oops, sorry. That goes in there like so, and that goes on there like so. And the nice thing is, they clip up like this. How's that? And I got one from my watercolours and my uh, gold paint, which I found, by the way. So I'm all ready. So that's all packed, ready for me to take. And um, I can then sew in the car as we're driving down to Saundersfoot. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Have a nice, happy, quiet time in the car. It's only the two of us going down. Rachel's taking her boys with her because we're going as a big family. So I think we'll be six of us. So hopefully we'll have fun. My husband is uh, hoping to do some fishing. So he's got all his licenses ready. And he's packed the car with all his fishing tackle. And I don't know where I'm going to put uh, my clothes because he's got six fishing rods in. I don't know whether he thought th six of us were going to go and fish, but I'm not going to go fishing. I'm going to be slow stitching. I thought he would have realised that. So what I thought I would do, I would sit in the car right by the side of him, with the window open, and I can stitch and he can fish. How about that? That'll be fun. Or not. Whatever. There we are. All done. Don't you think that's nice? So when... I think perhaps I might add some colour to this. I may add a nice green... What's the green in here? Sorry, I'm going to have to click my box open now. I'm all organised. Uh, I've got two greens, but I won't be using that one. It, it would look nice on there, I think, actually. But it's a bit pale, isn't it? So I'll have to look in my other box and see if there's a nice sap green or something. Yellow's not good. But that's done. So I've done that one. So there's our mark making for today. And what I'm dying to do to show you is this. So I've got three of these and there's a lovely picture on that one. And there's a lovely picture on that one. So I can either leave it as it is and I can just do some stitch around the edge. Or I can do as I've done here. But I have a funny feeling that that was water. But I can do one. Maybe I should have done that yellow. But anyway, I was only showing you how to 
to get the effect. It would have been nice with blue, but of course this is pink. I don't think I would put blue on there. You could. I could. I'll try it and I'll show you. I'll try it on a on a scrap piece and see what it looks like. But I rather like that. Um, and I think with a nice green with the, with the trees. I don't think it's really going to matter. And maybe. I'm not sure what colour to do the wall. Maybe a grey or something. That would be nice. Pink and grey go beautifully, by the way. So I shall see. So we'll wait and see. Watch this space. I'll finish that off and I'll show you tomorrow. All right. So there's some ideas for you. As I say, you if you've got these, any shape, it doesn't matter what shape they are, cut them out on your material. Because we tend to think they're only usable for um, paper, but they're not. It worked beautifully. Look at that. And don't forget the batting. And I thought that would give it a nice little bit of... Uh, and it was easier to stitch those together. All right. But this one, I think we'll do some borrow stitching. Borrow... I can't, don't know how to say it. Borrow, is it? Borrow? Borrow? Mind, having said that, having said that, Grey here, green there, and maybe some lines down here. Now I'm going to think about this. I'm not going to do this on camera. What I am going to do is sew this on. And um, I think I'm going to go around the edge with this. Now that needle doesn't want to go through. That's a flat needle. I'm Honestly, I'm going to have to invest in some lovely needles i can see i'll use the one i used before i like having the correct tools for anything i'm doing i'm the same with painting and this is annoying me now that i haven't got the need i used to have the needles and i've got a funny feeling they've disappeared somewhere not mentioning any names Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just tack that down there. And if I don't like it, I shall do something else. But what I thought I might do, I might make some uh, French knots in it as well. So let's just do this for a moment. I hope I'm on screen. Yes, I am. It's finding, trying to get it in a line because, there, yeah, that's better. And I don't want to turn the camera off because I'll have to faff about, um, joining them together, you know? And the thing is, with slow stitching, as the word implies, it's slow so I'm not going to rush it because that, then I'll hurt my fingers. I'll probably stab myself if I try rushing it. But I really do wish I had nice needles. And I know I had packs of them somewhere. But of course I've moved, haven't I? So therefore, they're probably somewhere else. But I thought I had everything in one place. But whilst we're down in um, Saundersfoot, for those of you that live near Carmarthen or in Carmarthen, I'm going to go back to Haverford West because there's a wonderful art shop there and craft shop. And I bought all those lovely things that I showed you. And I'm going to visit them again. And, and they were a brother and sister. I told you the story in my, my other video. It doesn't that look nice. And I'm going to buy some, see if he's got some needles. If not, I'll have to find, um, I'll tell you what I could do. I could call in Swansea and in the indoor market, they have a haberdashery in there and they sell all kinds of things. So chat my husband up and see if you can stop on the way in Swansea. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a nuisance because Swansea is always a bottleneck. Don't ask me why. They build these lovely roads, don't they? And then the traffic just jams up. Such a shame, isn't it? Yeah, that was easier. But if I had a nice pointy uh, needle, 
this would be so easy it would just go in beautifully there you go what do you think of that and if you wanted to you could go around and do another lot inside there or you could do french knots but i think what i'm going to do i'm going to do another row of stitches around there i think i am anyway i think it looks really pretty and that was that um hexagon that i made yesterday so you can do lots of things with circles and hexagons can't you on squares you'd never think of it with uh, slow stitching but it's only like making um patterns isn't it if i go on the end there i might be able to line that up better there i said there we are all right may as well finish it off so let me know how you're all getting on i've had some lovely um comments with people saying they're going to start uh slow stitching and it's very very peaceful very restful if you had a decent needle it would be but i'm doing okay i'm all right Yes, I like that. I think I can take that one out now. What do you think? Let me see if you can see it there. I'm still having trouble with the scaffold. And mind you, it's raining today, so it's going to be um, dark anyway. But I... I did a silly thing when we were downsizing before we came here i had a beautiful light it was very heavy but it was it was brilliant and i gave it away thinking i wouldn't have enough room but i could have managed it and my lovely brown cupboard i could have done the same i could have kept that and i had to go and buy the white one with the glass my nose is itching again there we go all done and it doesn't matter if some stitches are bigger than others. So there you are. So I've done the hidden stitches there, invisible stitching on, on the lace there. I'm going to do the burrow stitching across here. No, I'm not. I'm telling fibs. I'm going to do the invisible stitching here. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start doing some mark making and I'll find some grey. The blue wouldn't be any good, would it? but some grey um, threads. And I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Um, I don't know whether I've done any more. Oh, I put this on. I don't know whether you've actually seen this one. So I've got that one ready to stitch as well. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. And I haven't added anything to this one yet. Okay, and that's the back of the cover. But I think I've already shown you that. But I've added these um nothing stitched down yet the only thing i've stitched down on this is the the white lace so all that is is um invisible stitching on there and i tell you how i did that because i joined these together and i've got a white piece of material underneath there that you saw and i've done the invisible stitching but i haven't gone let me find something that's a bit thinner I haven't gone right through. So because there are so many layers, see, that's not going, I'll put that in. It's not coming out this side. So find your layers and, and work towards meeting the, um, the third layer, but don't bring it through. You can tell with your finger. And that's how I did the invisible stitching. So it doesn't show that side, but it shows, it, it doesn't show this side either. So that, that was good. I was pleased with that. So that turned out well, and I'm working on that one, getting my threads muddled up now. So I've stitched the buttons on there. I have put some material on the back of that to give it substance. I could have put some batting on there, but because I was layering this up, now this, I put it in something, um, and I've bagged up all my bits ready to take with me. And this is the, the lace off my daughter from my daughter's wedding dress, not off it because she lost it when she moved the wedding dress. Um, anyway, 
Th this was um, a yo-yo, Suffolk pup, whatever you want to call it. And it just disintegrated because it's old. So I've just got one layer on there and I shall do an overcast stitch and then I shall do something on there. All right. So I'll leave it there for now because I'm busy at the moment and um, I'm going to leave this as much as I can to do whilst I'm on holiday. But we are taking our recording equipment because I've got that one that's in a little box and watch this space. And there may be a few videos coming up next week as well. Rachel said she's going to make some as well. So have a good week and I sh hopefully back be back tomorrow and I should have this stitch down ready. And maybe I'll start doing a little bit of mark making in different places. OK, but I do like that. That's turned out really nicely. Don't you think? And I'm not sure yet whether I'll go around and do it again. I might try it and if it doesn't look right, then I'll leave it. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to say bye bye for now and I shall catch up with you tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Bye.